Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation in Spain, day 196 of the current situation and today it's all about new confinements in the capital city and we might be a little bit closer to knowing exactly what has gone wrong in Spain and other European countries with their response to this coronavirus pandemic. But more about that in a minute. Firstly, a big thanks to the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to the people that supported the channel through a small donation. You can see your names here. Thanks to the people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support. Now, as I said, Madrid in the news again today. And they announced yesterday that they are increasing the restrictions in the capital city and the surrounding areas. But according to the central government, it is not enough. The central government wants to lock the whole city down. We can see here that the government has asked Madrid to confine the entire capital, but the Madrid president, Misa Yuso, has limited it to eight more areas. The Minister of Health, Salvador Illa, has announced that the government has recommended that the community of Madrid apply the restrictions implemented in various areas of the region to the entire city of Madrid and even to all municipalities in which there are more than 500 cases of COVID-19 per 100,000 inhabitants. So the tensions between the Madrid community and the central government of Spain continue. There was a bit of a truce there earlier in the week when the president of the Madrid community and Pedro Sánchez got together and tried to work things out, but the truce didn't last long. Madrid comes out and announces that they're going to shut down eight more areas, and the Minister of Health comes out at exactly the same time and says that he recommends shutting the whole city down. So what's going to happen? But in the meantime, Madrid refuses to close all of its territory against the criteria of the government. The central government has asked the community of Madrid to extend the restriction measures to the entire city of Madrid and to all municipalities with an incidence of the virus greater than 500 cases per 100,000 inhabitants. However, the government of Isabel Diaz Ayuso announced this Friday that the restrictions adopted a week ago will now affect eight more basic health areas, adding a total of 45. So the criteria used in the community of Madrid is 1,000 cases per 100,000 inhabitants over a 14-day period, but the central government wants to bring that down to 500 per 100,000 in order to shut down the city. So if they applied the 500 criteria, how would that dynamic change the city? We can see here that three quarters of Madrid exceed the threshold for isolation. In 200 of the 286 health zones in the region, where 4.7 million people live, there are more than 500 cases per 100,000 inhabitants, the figure from which IA calls for restrictions. So Madrid City and the Madrid community at risk of being shut down entirely. Now, the interesting fact here is that if the rest of the country uses the same criteria, that 500 case mark, there would be a lot more places in Spain, not only Madrid, that would have to be shut down. So we'll see what happens in coming weeks and days with regard to this. Now, the central government apparently has the power to shut Madrid down. We can see here that the new normal allows the government to intervene in Madrid if it sees urgent need. The central government introduced the wild card in its decree at the end of the coronavirus alarm that empowers it to take the measures that are strictly necessary to replace the autonomies. So there we go. The central government apparently has the power to take control of the health systems in the autonomous communities. Something similar to what we saw in Catalonia a couple of years ago when the central government took away power from that region by activating this Article 155. So now they have something similar that they can use in order to get the health situation under control in the communities. And that's what they're threatening to do in Madrid. Now let's have a look at the health situation in Spain using the map and graph from El Confidencial newspaper. We can see here the graph on the right of the evolution of diagnosed cases and deaths on a seven day average. We can see that those numbers coming down a little bit at the end of the graph there in both diagnosed cases and deaths. And if we have a look at the seven day figures down below, we can see that there were 57,119 diagnosed cases down 2.56%. Hospitalizations were up 3.7% at 2,494 and deaths were down 5% 
at 475. Now, if we have a look at the evolution of accumulated cases in a 14-day period per 100,000 inhabitants, we can see here that Madrid still out in front at 721.73 cases. Castilla-La Mancha has now joined the dark blue groups at 417.98. Murcia also joins the elite club at 404.58 cases. And Estudios has finally topped the 100 mark at 111.56 cases per 100,000 inhabitants in the last 14 days. So that now means that if I'm not mistaken, there are no areas in Spain with less than 100 cases. Now we all know that the health crisis in Madrid is worse than any other area in the country at the moment. So what is Madrid going to do? Well, they've decided to enable two more hotels to host COVID patients derived from hospitals. And they're doing this with the aim of reducing the pressure on hospitals and increasing the capacity of beds available to care for patients with COVID-19 in the community of Madrid. Two new medicalized hotels will join the one that had already operated as such since March at the beginning of the state of alarm. So two more medicalized hotels being set up in order to take the strain off the hospital system in the community of Madrid. We'll see if it is successful. Now in recent times, we've been scratching our head trying to work out what has gone wrong in Spain and other European countries regarding their response to the COVID-19 crisis. We might finally have some answers as to what has exactly gone wrong. We can see here that in a report published by The Lancet comparing the situation in nine countries, it points out the weaknesses of the Spanish health system to face the pandemic. 82 countries around the world have decreed some type of confinement, total or partial, since the coronavirus pandemic began. But the effectiveness of such drastic restriction has been very uneven, basically because it had to be complemented with other measures that not all governments have carried out. And among those that have been the least correct is Spain, according to a study that compares the situation of nine countries in different parts of the world and that was published yesterday by the scientific journal The Lancet. Experts from the Chinese region of Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, New Zealand, Germany, Norway, the United Kingdom and Spain have prepared a document that underlines the need for countries to have precise strategies to get out of confinement, knowledge of the real situation of the infection and the number of infected, community commitment to security measures, capacity of the health system or border control to avoid imported cases are some of them. The Asian countries, which faced the brunt of the coronavirus at the first moment, New Zealand, Norway and Germany, were able to overcome it with quite similar roadmaps, an ability to perform a large number of PCRs from the beginning, hyper-technological tracking systems that quickly found suspects and quarantined them to prevent further contagion especially in the case of Asian nations, increased hospital capacity and border detection of suspected cases. But not all countries acted in such an effective way. The United Kingdom and Spain had difficulties to implement effective systems to find cases, carry out tests, trace, isolate those infected and strengthen their health system, says the study. So there we go. It basically sums it up that things were not done well from the beginning. And of course, we're suffering the consequence at the moment of all of those previous mistakes. On that note, let's have a look at some of the comments from the last video. One here from the Canadian Home Painter. Hard to believe I've been watching these videos for almost 200 days. I think we are in for a very interesting winter here in Canada as well. Keep up the good videos. Yeah, thanks for the comment. Hard to believe that you have been watching the videos for such a long time. Hard for me to believe that I have been making these videos for such a long time. Unfortunately, the situation continues and continues, and we just saw a minute ago some of the reasons as to why that is that were published in that scientific journal. Everybody seemed to have got it wrong, in Spain at least. We saw that the UK as well, and the situation never seems to end. And as we can see, we're going back to lockdown situations again in some parts of Spain, which uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not happy about, and I'm sure that everybody living in this country is not happy about the situation here either. And to be honest, I'm not really up to date with the situation in Canada at the moment, but I imagine it's not as bad as it is here. One here from Mickey, 300 military to disinfect and help with general duties in Madrid. Wow, Madrid is roughly 233 miles square. Madrid is roughly 233 square miles and has a population of about 6.5 million. I hope they have had their Weetabix on the point of people leaving Madrid to go to other areas who can blame them. I'm sure lots of them were stuck in flats for weeks in the last lockdown. 
If the government is so worried about people from Madrid spreading the virus, why not make it compulsory to be tested before you leave with a certificate to produce to the local Guardia in whichever town you travel to, thus providing a clean bill of health? Yeah, Mickey, thanks for the comment. And you're right, they certainly have got their work cut out for them trying to get this thing under control in Madrid. And hopefully, as you said, they have had their Weetabix. I prepare for these videos every day by having a nice breakfast, cup of coffee, a little bit of Vegemite on toast, and that gives me the strength to carry on. Maybe I could give some of my Vegemite to the military in order to help them perform their task. And you're right, it would be a good idea for people that are leaving Madrid to have a health certificate, proving that they have a clean bill of health before they go to other parts of Spain. But unfortunately, that's just too simple and therefore too difficult for it to be implemented here in Spain. One here from Landlord. Here in Finland, we talk about 10 people out of 100,000. In Spain, they talk about 1,000, which is like 100 times compared with us. Yeah, Landlord, thanks for the comment. In Finland, you talk about 10 per 100,000. Here in Spain, or at least in Madrid, we talk in the thousands. So you can see the difference between your part of the world and this part of the world at the moment. And you're right, it's a huge difference. But if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there's anywhere in Spain that has had 10 cases per 100,000 in the last six months. So you can see what the situation is like here. One here from Sybil. I enjoy your videos and love Spain. I haven't heard anyone comment about your interesting speaking cadence where you tend to end a non-question statement by raising your pitch. Not criticizing, just find it unique and recognizable. Thanks for your valuable videos. Oh, and nice that you have a sort of collaboration with James Blick as I love Devour Tours in Spain. Yes, yeah, well, thanks for the comment. And uh, over the months, I have had various people in the comment section point out that I do have that inflection at the end of statements, not necessarily questions where it should happen, but I tend to do it at the end of statements. Unfortunately, it's a characteristic of how some people in Australia talk, especially my generation and the younger generations. There was a very popular television program many years ago. It's still around called Neighbours. And there was another one called Home and Away. And many people around the world, especially in the UK, were exposed to the Aussie way of speaking. And apparently, from what I read in another comment, it even became common among some people People in the UK to speak like Australians do. I'll try to see if I can change, but I don't think it's going to be easy. But hopefully it won't put you off watching the videos. One here from Catherine. Canada is a constitutional monarchy. It works well. The Queen is just a rubber stamp. She is ceremonial only. Our Governor General does the work for her and is like a president. Each province has a Lieutenant Governor. Same job. I'm no monarchist, but the system works fine. Elizabeth doesn't hunt elephants or take bribes from the Saudis. She seems rather a decent old thing. I think she is one of the last people around to believe in the divine right of kings, however. Yeah, Catherine, thanks for the comment about constitutional monarchies. Here in Spain, as we know, they're talking about changing the system, or at least Pablo Iglesias and some members of his party are talking about trying to organize a referendum in order to get rid of the king and bring in a republic. And you're right, Canada seems to work well, Australia seems to work well, New Zealand seems to work well, England seems to go okay with the system that they have in place. And the system that you mentioned there in Canada is exactly the same as the one that we have in Australia. Of course, the Queen is represented there by the Governor General. She doesn't get down to Australia too often nowadays because, of course, at her age, not easy to travel. So the Governor General does those duties. And of course, each state has a governor as well. And you're right, as far as I know, she has never been caught hunting elephants, but I think her husband might have done a few dodgy things in the past. One here from Miguel. Google 11 really good reasons why your country should have a monarchy. Yeah, Miguel, thanks for the comment. Your wish is my command. Here you go. 11 good reasons why your country should have a monarchy. Number one, Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index puts seven monarchies inside the top 10 countries for their absence of corruption. Denmark, New Zealand, Sweden, Norway, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and Canada are among the very best. Two researchers find that social trust is higher in monarchies. Social trust is an important factor in sociology and economics and generally correlates with lower crime and lower corruption, among other things. And monarchies also rank pretty well in terms of their economic framework. In the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index, five of the top 10 countries have a monarch. New Zealand, Denmark, Norway, the UK and Australia make the cut. Now I'm only going to have a look at three of the 11 reasons, obviously because of time constraints. But as you can see, among the countries that were mentioned there, Spain was nowhere to be found. And that could be one of the reasons why they want to get rid of it here in this country. One here from FCB, the Madrileños deserve better than a Ayuso. 
it's time for an Article 155 and take over the management of the Comunidad de Madrid. EFCB, thanks for the comment. Lots of people talking about this at the moment. We saw before that the central government does have the power now to intervene in the health system. I don't think there's any talk of them intervening in the whole Madrid community, but an interesting point that you put forward. And there are a lot of people very upset with the way that Madrid is being run by Ms. Ayuso and her government. So we'll see what happens in the future, but I'm not expecting a Catalan-style 155 in Madrid. And finally, one here from Going Commando. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Going Commando. And if anybody watching this video from a non-English speaking background is wondering what Going Commando means, I suggest you look it up. And uh, thank you for watching these videos. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.